All right, students, so here's a video on completing the square. Uh, here's SpongeBob SquarePants and Patrick Star. Um, uh, SpongeBob doesn't, doesn't actually have square pants. They're a rectangular prism, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, anyway, so completing the square, what are we going to do? So we're going to start with this quadratic here. And in Delta Math, actually, sometimes it'll be written in a different way. If it is, um, you'll just have to rewrite the equation by moving some terms around. And so I'm going to show you an example of like how you would move like this 20. Because basically what we want to do is we want to isolate the x terms on one side of the equation. So the x squared and the whatever this coefficient is here in x. Um, so in this example you'd want say like ax squared plus bx. You want all of this on the left side and then everything else on the right side of the equation. So that's going to be my first step for, and it depends again how it's written, your first step is you want to move the c term to the other side of the equation. So I'm just going to add 20 to both sides. And so that's going to leave me with this, this form. This is the form you want when you do completing the square, because you just, again, want these x terms on one side of the equation, because that's what we're going to complete the square on, on these terms here. And then you want all of the constants over on here, the, the the constant. So that's what we're going to do. So the next step, and this is actually how you complete the square, I'm going to divide the b coefficient, this b term here, this 12 by 2, and then you square it and add that to both sides. This is actually going to complete the square here, and I'm going to show you a visual rep representation of that in a minute. So what is 12 divided by 2? That's 6. 6 squared is 36. Okay. So I add that to both sides, so I'm going to have 56 on this side of the equation, and then I have this trinomial over here. This is a complete square. This is, believe it or not, a square number, because what we're going to do is we can factor this, and that's going to be our next step. And so if I factor this, you're going to get x plus 6 times x plus 6. So if you need to revisit how to do factoring, um, I'll put a video up on that so you can see that too. So, so we want to factor the trinomial and you're going to get x plus 6 times x plus 6, and you're going to get that equals 56. So that's just rewritten. We can just rewrite x plus 6 times x plus 6 is x plus 6 squared. So x plus 6 squared equals 56. Now we're done. We've factored it. We don't need to solve it. It's not asking us to solve anything right now. Um, if you did have to solve it, what you would do is you'd take the square root of both sides, and then it would be x plus 6 equals plus or minus radical 56, and then you can subtract... 6 from that. So it would be plus or minus radical 56 minus 6. Um, but I wanted to show you a visual representation of how this works. So basically if we think back to our area model, we have x squared plus 12x, and this is what I was completing the square on. So this x squared, right, is just x times x, so we can think of that as a square. And then we have 12x here. We'll just say that this is this rectangle here. x is this length here, and this length, and this length here is 12. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. So I'm dividing that 12 by 2. So each of these rectangles are now 6x, right? So I'm going to rewrite this whole thing here as this square. And I'm just moving the 6x's, right? to either side of the square. Now I'm just missing this little chunk here, this little square, right? But this square has a dimension of 6 times 6, right? Because this is 6, this is x, so this has to be 6. So what is the area of that? 36. So this is actually the completed square. Now we can see that visually using the area model, why we actually have to add that 36 to complete the square. Okay, so I hope this helps. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. And again, the delta math questions, I'll go ahead and I'll put up an example of like what the delta math questions are asking. All right, so here's an example of a delta math question. In using the method of completing the square, if using the method of completing the square to solve the quadratic equation x squared minus 16x minus 36 equals zero, which number would have to be added to both sides of the equation to complete the square? So. All you have to do is figure out, all right, I need to divide this b coefficient by 2 and square it, and then I'm going to add that to both sides. So what is that number? 
negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared equals 64. And be really careful when you enter this into your calculators, especially if you're using a graphing calculator, you have to put the negative 8 in parentheses and square that. If you don't, it thinks if you just write like negative 8 squared in your calculator, it thinks, remember your order of operations, it's going to square it first and then it's going to multiply it by negative 1 and you would end up with negative 64, which is not correct. So that's one example of a delta math question. The other ones are going to ask you to just kind of figure out this form, right? So the final form of the perfect squared uh, quadratic here. So x squared plus 15x minus 44 equals 3x. So we need to, what is the intermediate step to complete the square? So we're not solving it, we just want to get it into the squared form. So again, you have to rewrite this so that all the x's are on one side of the equation and then the constant is on the other. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So it gets everything on the left side of the equation and it's all going to be equal to 0. Negative 3, uh, 3x minus 3x is 0. And then I'm going to add 44 to both sides. And now I have the form that I need to complete the square. So x squared plus 12x equals 44. That's what I need to do to complete the square. So what do I have to do? I divide that 12 by 2, and that equals 6. And I'm going to square that. So 6 squared equals 36. And then I add that to both sides of the equation. So that's x squared plus 12x plus 36 equals 44 plus 36. What is that? That's 80. So now if I factor that, that x squared plus 12x plus 36, that equals x plus 6 times x plus 6. And that whole, whole thing equals 80. So this is what I'm going to submit into Delta Math. I would just type in x plus 6 here and 80 here. Hit submit and you're done. If, for example, um, in either of these problems you get something that you don't know how to do, there's no penalty in Delta Math. You know, if you get the form and you don't really like the way it's written and you're having difficulty with it, just skip it and try a different one. There's no penalty. Like, for example, sometimes in these questions here, you'll get something that has an odd number here uh, for the negative 16. If you get an odd number, um, like negative 11 or, you know, 15 or something like that, just go ahead and skip it and move on uh, if you don't feel like dealing with decimals. So that's why I set up no penalty. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Please let me know if you have any questions. And if you have questions about factoring, I'll save that video on the course website as well.